Hello and welcome to informational video on task number two for our chapter 10 project. This one is on measures of center and variation, so you'll be finding the mean, median, mode, range, interquartile range, and mean absolute deviation of both sets of our data. Afterwards, you'll also be finding whether or not there is an outlier in our data as well. This is usually the longest part of the project for most groups as it requires the most mathematical calculations. It's also the most important part of the project uh, since if you make an early calculation mistake, it might affect things later on, including the outlier or your graphs which are coming up in a future task. So it's important to double check your work a lot during this. As we have with previous sections, we're gonna make sure that we show some uh, projects that were done in previous years to kind of help guide you in creating a very good product in the end. The idea of this task yet again is very simple since we are just looking for the mean, median, and mode, range, all that stuff, but showing the work will be important on Google Docs. Here is one from last year uh, where they found the various measures center and variation and notice how they showed it and they used color and uh, having their heading stick out a little bit more than the actual data to help guide so you can get the answer. So notice here they added their series of numbers and they showed their list. They showed what they divided by. They grouped it with parentheses. They had their answer stick out uh, by having it be a different color and it looks like it is actually bolded. And we showed you those things last week in the previous one where bolding, italicize, underline, change the text color. You can even do a highlight there. Um, you can make it bigger or change your font. And yet again, if you go through format and we're dealing with text, that's where you can see a lot of this as well as some other options that they have here for you. Notice their median. That one looks really nice. They've taken the same data, so they kind of copied and pasted it. It looks like they changed their plus signs to commas, which was pretty quick to do. Notice they crossed it out. Uh, the way they do that is they highlighted the one that they wanted to cross out. And if you go to Format, Text, it's actually called Strike Through. So if I click it here, we'll actually uncross it out, but which is the way it would have started. But when you go Format, Text, and Strike Through, then it crosses itself out. Notice they had one left there in the middle for the median, so they highlighted to make sure that their median stuck out. They also double checked to make sure they had the correct number of numbers. Notice in the mean, they had 25 numbers and they counted, they divided by 25. Here, they definitely double checked to make sure they still had 25 numbers so no data disappeared. Here's their mode, their range was pretty apparent. Look how they did their IQR. You know, they had two left in the middle, so they highlighted both of them, but then they you know, clearly identified that it's you know, just 110 in the end and 114 over here. They subtracted to get their IQR. Their mat is extremely well done here. They even put arrows, uh, which is very nice. You can kind of get that using inserting um, different images or uh, they have horizontal lines and they have different stuff that you can add there. Yeah, I think they might even put in type of drawing type of thing. The arrows is probably even just a little too much there. That was really going above and beyond there. If you had your data and then below it, you had your distances to the mean, uh, that would be perfectly fine. I've seen some groups actually organize it in a quick little table too. And some just make a list. You know, just having this would have been perfectly fine, but that looks extremely good. So that's some ideas of how to show your mean, medium, mode, range, IQR, and MAD. Also in this section, it asks you to put your final answers in a nice organized table. We had done that a bit in the previous video, so you can refer back there. I'll show you a one from a project uh, done in the past, and here's one. So they had their final answers here uh, shown, and they basically created a table where they had mean, median, mode, all their measures here, their different data was here, and they put their final answers in, and they really had a nice title that stuck out so we knew it was their final answers, and they had each one really stand out. Reminder to make a table, you very simply go to insert table, and you gotta figure out the size of your table. So they wanted three across, 
and they went, it looks like seven down, and then you just select from there, and that's how they created it. A reminder, once you have the table, same things you've been doing, you can change font sizes and types, um, you can change the text color, if you want, they wanted the titles to be, you know, a different color in the background, background color is usually over here, you might need to press more, um, depending on how you're zoomed in, but background color is an option over on the right in Google Docs. So they did all that, looks great. Reminder, if you were creating your table and messed up, I showed this in the last video, you can go to Format and Table, and that's where you can like add a row above, add a column to the left, or delete a row if you made too many. And in Table Properties, you can adjust things such as the uh, border type, the border color, and you can kind of mess around a little bit with it. Notice now it's all red. So those are a bunch of your options to do with that. The final thing in this section is also stating whether it's an outlier, so you should use your mathematical evidence we practiced last chapter. Here's another group who showed that. Um, so I've seen many groups create this kind of in their table, in the final answer table, and some people make it below their table, and that works as well. So notice they stated they did not have an outlier in that particular class, and they showed their formula that we had been practicing. You can use your notes page to remind you how to do that from chapter nine. They looked for an upper outlier, they looked for a lower outlier, there was neither available. They use greater than and less than signs. You might put into words, either one works. But this was a well-designed project, uh, all three that you saw today and hopefully you can create something that's just as good and if not better. Have a good one.